Hi guys, now we're going to take a look at solving and finding sets of values for what we call quadratic inequalities. So, uh, with the other one, we do exactly the same thing. So, before when we had the linear questions, we solved it. Now we have the quadratic, identified by this squared here, we solve it as well. But you should know that when you solve a quadratic, we get everything over to one side. So, just to make this easier, I'm going to put this equal to zero and just rewrite this. So you should be looking to factorize and they, sh they should be giving you ones that factorize anyway at this stage. So the factors are 8 that make 6 are 4 and 2 and we add those two together to get it to make 6. So you should know if you're, if you're watching this video we can just swap the signs over here and therefore we have the roots of this graph we also know it's y-intercept so what we can do now is make a little sketch so let's say that's minus 2 let's say that's minus 4 and let's say that's 8 and you should know that this is a parabola so I'll try and do the best graph I can oh, oh, when, oh my god that's horrible let's do that again start off so well there we go so to explain this next bit I'm just going to go back to the start because normally we have when we have a function or a graph of x which we have here of x it's normally equal to y and what we've actually done was saying that y is 0 so when are the functions, when are these coordinates lower than 0 for the y? So here's the y-axis. So when does this graph go below 0? So when is it below? And that's this bit here. It's basically saying where is it below the x-axis, where y is equal to 0. So what we say is it's in this area here, so it must be less than minus 2, but more than minus 4. That's the answer. Let's have a look at another one. In fact, what I've, what I've set up here I've, uh, like an idiot, I've drawn this completely wrong. So, uh, I'm just going to pause it and rectify this. Okay, so here we go. So this is what we have just done, this question up here. Now you can see the only thing I've done is change the direction of the inequality. So if I make a very quick sketch again, let's say that's 2 minus 2 and let's say that's minus 4 and let's say that's 8 for argument's sake. Now talking about the y again, so this is normally a y, we're swapping y for 0. So when, it, when, are these, when is it more than y equals 0? So when is it more than the x-axis? So all of these coordinates here have a coordinate bigger than when y is equal to 0. So this is the ones we're interested in. So all of these coordinates are on this side of this mark and on the left side of this mark. All these y values are bigger than 0. So here we would say, well, x has got to be more than minus 2, and it's got to be less than minus 4. We can't form a compound inequality like this one. So let's have a look at a few more. Feel free to pause the video and try it for yourself now, and then press play to see if you're right. So we're going to factorize this and solve it. So we're going to have, what's this one, um, 8 and 2? No, yeah. So minus 8 and x plus 2. So we can solve that to get this. And we have the y intercept. So let's make a sketch. I'm going to do it over here. So we've got 8. We've got minus 2. It's going to cross at minus 16. This bit is not actually that important because we only need... Oh, oh dear. Shocking. Here we go. Try again. <laughs> it doesn't matter 
but we're looking at where they're more than zero. So it's above this x axis, above the line y equals zero. So we're looking for these parts here. All these coordinates have got a y value bigger than zero. So it's on this side of the line and on this side. So it has to be more than 8 and less than minus 2. Let's try another one. So we're going to solve it by factorizing um, minus 8 and x minus 4, if you factorize that correctly. So x equals 8 and x equals 4. So again, let's make a sketch. So it's going to be 4 and 8. It's going to be crossing up here at 32. That's a bit better. That's perfect. So again, so where are the y values less than 0? Well, all of these have a y value less than 0, so we're interested in this part here. So it has to be less than 8 and more than 4. Okay, so this one is far more difficult. You can see that instantly it's a minus 4x squared. So that means my parabola is going to be inverted. It's going to be reflected in the x-axis. So I'm just going to rewrite this one, and I'll, I'll take it a little bit slower. This one's actually not too bad because you can see here all of these numbers, there are multiple 4, so I can divide by 4. So that's what I'm going to do. And at the same time, I'm going to rearrange. So 4x squared divided by 4. That'd be minus x squared plus an x plus a 3. Now, when solving, it doesn't matter what side I collect these on, so I could technically move everything onto the other side and therefore making this a positive. Or you can times everything by negative 1. It, you'll get the same result. So it's going to be x squared minus an x minus a 3 equals 0. Now let's go ahead and solve it. So when you have a prime number here, you really don't have to think very much. It's going to be 3 and 1. And how can I make a 1? Well, I can't. So this question doesn't actually work. To solve this question, we would have to use either solve it by completing the square or the formula. So because it didn't work, guys, what I've quickly done is I've got rid of the 4 there. So I'll take you through... Again, so here's our new one, and I've just rewritten it with an equals. Now I'm going to get everything on this side, on the right-hand side, or just times it all by negative 1, meaning I won't have this negative x squared anymore. So x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. So you'll see now I can, in fact, factorize this one. So this is going to be a 6 and a 2. How do I make a minus 4? Well, it's minus 6 plus a 2. And therefore, I will get my roots to be minus 2 and 6. OK, so let's make a sketch. Let's say that's minus 2 and that's 6. And our y-intercept is going to be 12. So if you, if you don't realize that it is this inverted parabola, by looking at the y-intercept, you should get a pretty good clue. Because if you were to draw a line coming down like this, it obviously wouldn't hit the y-intercept. So therefore, it must be going like so. So where is where are these values of y more than 0? Well, all these y-coordinates have a value of more than 0. So we're looking at this part here. So it's less than 6, but more than minus 2. Without sketching this graph, a lot of people say it's the other way around because they just don't appreciate and don't see the fact that it's uh, this inverted parabola. So always sketch the graph. So that's this one's pretty much the same, but it's got a... Uh, a more complicated coefficient. So let's do this. So I'm just going to write it out equal to zero. Just a good habit to get into. 
get everything on one side or times everything by minus 1. Um, when I say one side, I meant the other side, so we get rid of this negative. It's going to be 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. Now, when they're prime numbers here and here, you don't really have to do the, the really long way of factorising. You can just think about it. If I go a bit too fast for you at this point, just just pause it, factorise it normally, you'll get the same answer. So here I'm only my only option is a 1 or a 2, but it's going to be affected by this 3. So if I put a 2 there and a 1, I can see I get 6x and 1x, which I can make a 7. So it's going to be minus 6x minus 1x is minus 7x. So uh, you should be pretty happy at solving this now. So x is equal to 1 third and x is equal to 2. Make a sketch. So let's say that's a third and that's 2. It's a negative x squared. So we know it's going to be an inverted parabola. And we have a y intercept of minus 2. Again, if you didn't see the inverted parabola, if your y-intercept's down here, you have no option but to draw an inverted parabola. Oh, it's terrible. So when are the values less than zero? So these y-coordinates here, when y equals this, are all less than zero. So we're after this side of the two and this side of the third. So my answer is x is more than 2 and x is less than a third. The last style of question we're going to expect you to do is when we have two of them. So I'm getting a, it's getting a bit conscious on time for this video, so I'm going to just skip to the hardest variety you would have. But we're just going to do basically two at the same time. So we're going to have... I'm just going to skip a few steps now that's going to be minus 4 and plus 1 so it's going to be x equals 4 and x equals minus 1 so let's make a sketch so minus 1 4 it's a normal parabola it's going to cross down here at minus 4 like so and when are the y values less than 0? well they're in there so x is less than 4 and it's also more than minus 1. Let's do the same here. Actually, I want to I want to put that as a as an equals. Okay, so the factors of 3 are just 3 and 1. And how do you make a minus 4 where they're both minuses? If you're not this quick at factorising, just take your time, pause it if you need to, see what I've done. So here we have 1 and a 3. Just check the wind steps up here so you can tell it's a normal parabola. Oh, that's, oh, I'm getting worse. So when is it more than 0? So it's there and there. All these y coordinates here are bigger than 0. So we have x is more than 3 and x is less than 1. So when does it work for both? So let's draw both of these on a number line. So if we have minus 1 and 4, our first graph tells us they have to be in there. Our next one is 3 and 1. And it tells us they have to be there and less than 1. So you can see that there is an overlap there and there. So what we can actually say is this. We can say the x values can be less than 4 but more than 3 and the x values can be less than 1 but more than minus 1. That's when there is an overlap between and that is when it's meeting both criteria.